So, uh, dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, thanks for to the ABC and uh, and Boston Scientific for this uh, invitation. And um, this slide displays you different aspect of left main um, that I found on my hard drive while preparing the the talk. And you see that uh, I think it's a good illustration of the diversity of the shape, size, and anatomy uh, of this uh, of this vessel and. Uh, we know that the left main is different from the other coronary bifurcation because, uh, well, first it's in a vital site and uh, uh, it has a very proximal uh, location. It's the, the most proximal um, bifurcation. Um, the left main also has larger diameters and wider main branch, side branch angles compared to other bifurcation. There is a frequent non-cylindric shape of the main vessel and also frequent uh, involvement of trifurcation in around 10% of the case. Um, moreover, we also know that the, compared to other bifurcation, uh, the side branch occlusion is not really acceptable because of the potential consequences. And finally, there are more marked diameter discrepancies. So of course, these uh, very uh, special features also involve uh, different uh, risk of uh, uh, complications that we have to overcome while performing a PCI. Uh, for example, that this, is a, this was an osteal left main uh, uh, tight stenosis that appeared after uh, cardiac surgery. And uh, when we had to fix this uh, osteal uh, left main, uh, we observed that the diastole, the, the, the left main was extremely large and um, the diastole landing zone displayed a diameter of more than 6.3 millimeters, which involved a very, very large stent uh, to get a correct result. And that was a quite a challenge. And it's not so isolated, and I'm sorry, I don't know why the, this, um, the slides are not uh, adequately um, presented, whatever. Uh, these uh, left la large left main are not that unusual because, uh, uh, for example, if you're looking by IVUS, you observe that um, there are a substantial uh, percentage of patients displaying um, average diameter over 5.5 millimeters. So once again, extremely large left main. Moreover, the left main shape, when you look at it with CT scan, is not cylindric. And there, uh, it's, there's in almost all cases different, significant dis difference in the lumen area between the ostium and the diastole. And uh, in 33% of the cases, the left main ostium is larger than the diastole left main. So that's also something that we have to keep in mind when doing PCI. And when we look at with OCT, so once again with intraconary imaging, you observe that it's not, uh, um, the, the, it's not a cylinder, but it's also quite eccentric. And uh, these are some data from Lemons that we're gonna present tomorrow, and in which we measured the ratio between the minimal and the maximal diameter in different points of the left main, and we observed that actually um, around 35% of the patients displayed a marked eccentricity of their left main, which involved that there is a higher risk of malaposition in, this, in the left main, and you need a stent that could be overexpanded and uh, to correctly cover all the vessel. Um, there's also some diameter discrepancies between the main vessel and the main branch, and this is an example of um, uh, an osteal LAD lesion that we treated with, um, uh, by, by a CTO technique, and in which we performed uh, IVUS analysis just afterwards, and you see here that actually there was a quite di a, a huge discrepancy between the diastole uh, landing zone on the LAD with a diameter of 3.1 and a proximal um, landing zone uh, diameter of 5.3. So if you want to cross uh, the lesion with a, uh, and treat the lesion with a one single stent, you need a stent that can um, afford, that, that, that can come to, to both diameter and that can be um, increased and overexpanded up to 5.3. And if we're looking at the most recent uh, um, devices, that we have in the cath lab, um, it's quite interesting to see that not all the stents can go up to 5.5 or 6, and we see that these kind of diameters are quite frequent. Um, so that's, uh, that's an issue that we have to keep in mind. Moreover, um, because of the osteal location, 
uh, or the very proximal location of the, of the, of the left main, we know that um, implanting a stent in the left main is also at risk for longitudinal compression. And that's a, a, I mean a terrible um, uh, illustration of this longitudinal compression with RCT. You see that there was no real, uh, we did not suspect that on the NGO, although the result was so-so, uh, but with uh, uh, the um, RCT we observed that the, the stent was almost reduced uh, of 50% in its length. So, of course, um, there are different factors influencing the stent longitudinal compression, including some uh, anatomical factors, some procedure, procedural factors, but the stent design also matters. And um, from the work by, of John Norminston um, years ago, we know that the alloy type, the strut thickness, the design, including the number of connectors on the proximal hoops, peak, peak, or peak valley between hoops and in-phase out of phase design, all these factors will influence the resistance of the stent to the compression. And uh, so when we are when we working on the left main, we need really a stent that has a strong, uh, a strong um, resistance to compression on the very proximal part. Finally, um, the last issue or the last concern that we can have while performing PCI on the left main is the size of the side uh, of the of the cell because it will influence the our ability to adequately wire the side branch and by an adequate wiring I uh, mean uh, being able to put a wire into a cell connecting to the carina and also because that's the side branch is quite large you can whatever if it's a circumflex or LED it means that you need to really overexpand um, your cell uh, to large diameter in order to get the optimal scaffolding you need. So, as you understood, when we are doing, when we are dealing with a stand for left main, we have some specific needs, and these specific needs are requested by the specific risk that I exposed to you, and so the solutions will come by uh, a reinforced structure some nice overexpansion capacities, an increased trackability, and some large cells to access correctly to the side branch. And also, I think uh, the cherry on the cake is an optimal radio opacity, opacity because, of course, you are doing some pre very precise um, PCI, especially if you are trying to cover correctly the ostium of the left main. So it's very important to be able to correctly uh, see your stent. So in this perspective, um, I think that with the Synergy Megatron, we have an adequate tool uh, in the cath lab now because, uh, well, it has a reinforced structure on the proximal part that, that is uh, related to the presence of four connectors on the proximal two segments. Um, um, the, the, la the, di the more distal part of the stand is, uh, is quite comparable to a Synergy. The very important point is the excellent um, conformability and overexpansion capacities of this stent and uh, the ability of the uh, and the large um, uh, cell that can be really expanded up to five and so um, in this perspective I think that's a very very good stand for left main PCI thank you for your attention